Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to talk about toys. Today, we are taking a look at some Lego blind bag Dungeons & Dragons minifigures. I've been very excited about these since I saw them announced at Comic-Con, and then I saw a link online to these six packs. There, there are six minifigures in each one of these boxes. There are 12 total figures. So I did order two sets. There's the potential to get all 12, but it's pretty unlikely. This uh, this takes me back a little bit. Uh, I used to do a lot of blind bag unboxings on this channel when it was called SEO Toy Review. So it's kind of funny to be doing it again. If you never saw the Dungeons & Dragons episode on the channel, I did an episode with Farpoint Toys about the LJN Dungeons & Dragons line. In that episode, I talked about how I played Dungeons & Dragons when I was a kid, uh, mostly in elementary school. And I had a Lego village. I didn't really talk about this in the episode, but I had like a Lego village in my basement made out of, like, the Knights Lego sets that was sort of the world of Dungeons & Dragons that my friends and I played in. So I had a castle that was my character's castle. I had another castle that was my friend's castle. My friend had Legos of a lot of his characters, too, but not all of my characters. That's the other weird thing about the way we played D&D. Because we couldn't really get a bunch of friends together to play as a party, we would often play that one person controlled everybody in a party... And one DM, so only two people had to be together. It was very rare, like at birthday parties maybe, that we could get multiple friends together at the same time to play. So, we did bend a lot of rules. So these guys come in little cardboard boxes. They're not actually blind bags. You can't uh, feel them up to figure out which character's in there. Maybe by weight you could figure something out. But I would have loved to have some of these characters when I was a kid uh, to go in my Dungeons & Dragons world that I had created that mostly used things like monsters in my pockets for bad guys. Um, I could make knights and I could make archers and things like that. Wizards. Um, islanders. <laughs> you know, all the things that were in Lego in uh, the early 90s. So I'm really hoping to get a wide variety of these guys. The box art shows off all kinds of fun things. Uh, there's a Mind Flare, I believe the Lady of Pain. I don't know the proper names of everything, so I'm hoping there's some labels in here just to help me out. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to put names on the screens when I find out exactly what everything is, because uh, I don't know if it's like a half-elf or, or, or whatever. Alright, I'm seeing some armor here. What do I have? Oh no, this is... I gotta be really careful. I don't have pieces roll on the floor. Okay, so this is the Birdman. Are they Kenkus? Do these have names? They put as little text on some of these things as possible. Uh, yeah, the checklist doesn't actually tell you what everybody is. No, this is not the Birdman. The Birdman's at the top of the paper. This is a Dragon Knight. So he has pretty traditional Lego Man build to start with. Then he's got armor, and man, did I love having suits of armor for Legos back in the day. You know, you you, you get a big castle, and most of the guys would have Lego armor tamponed on, and like one suit of armor would come for the main knight. <sighs> yeah. Those were the days. Alright, so I've got that on. I put his dragon head on. He's already looking pretty cool. He's got some holes in the back of his head to plug in some spikes. This would have blown my mind as a kid. And then it looks like he's got a mace weapon here. I mean, these figures, the, the design of LEGO minifigures has come so far. This is a really awesome figure. And uh, the customization that you could do, you know, with like using some of these parts, mixing them around with other people. I don't know. There's an extra spike, like his head spike. I don't know if that's just an extra piece or if that was supposed to go somewhere. At first I was hoping it was like a tail, but there's no way to peg that into a minifigure. He looks great. So he's got a, a, a mace. Uh, he's got a shield, the big body size shield with the dragon emblem on it and awesome armor. Love this guy already. So that's one character down. Time for number two. Oh, this is the bird guy. So, in D&D, are these guys still called Kenku? I, f I swear that was what the name of the Birdman race was. My friend Derek had a Kenku character. 
And I think he bought some uh, some lead minis of Birdman, but never painted them up. And he did an audio project in college for his AV stuff uh, about a, a Birdman, like a modern-day Birdman in, in New York City kind of thing. Uh, that was pretty cool. Oh, this is great. So the wings work like a backpack. It's got a big hawk head. Even has uh, specialized legs that have sort of a bird shape to them. This is very... Um, what was that line? The, the, the like It was basically like Thundercats in uh, in Lego form. What were those guys called? I don't Around the time of Ninjago, I'm blanking on it. Oh, well. There were like animal warriors. Chima! Lego Chima. That's what they were called. This guy reminds me a lot of them. He's, he's an archer. This is a cool figure. Again, so I'm lucking out here because I would rather get all of the cool, like, beast people and monsters than any of the, like player characters. I was watching the Paralympics the other day, and a man with no arms from the U.S. got gold. It was pretty incredible. I wish they showed how he actually uh, pulled back his bow. They didn't show that part. They would just show him shooting it. But, all right, that's what this guy made me think of. And this guy has a pet dog. And that's another thing I thought was really neat with this line. There are a lot of little pack-in pets. Little tiny, little tiny gray dog. Does that click into bricks? Sideways, you can click on there, under the base. Another cool set. All right, box number three. So far, so good. No repeats. All right, I see some leafy stuff. It's like a ranger. This guy has a little, uh, little package in there with a brick on it. He must have a like a paper cloth type cape. Yep, a little cape in there. I'm gonna consult the instructions for this guy. He has a little staff to build. So this is, I, I guess, a ranger or a. What are the shapes? Oh, he's a halfling. He's got short legs. He has two heads, or I got two heads. There are multiple faces on the heads. He has a dirty face and a clean face, and there's there's two different expressions painted on it. So that's interesting. All right, cape. I think probably goes on before the head. He's got a helmet with antlers. Which is why I was thinking he was like a ranger of some sort. He's got his little stand. And then his staff. Wood piece. And a flower, or a leaf, and then another leaf, and then a flower. So that gives him his staff, and he has a little bird friend. Which can sit on his hand there. Also very fun. Alright, so I got three pieces with him. I got just a stud, I got an extra flower, and then like I said, I got that alternate face. I think the one face might be to make it a female character. That's kind of cool if it's supposed to be one of the player characters that you can swap it out to be male or female. Setting the extra pieces off to the side. Box number four. Got two heads in this set also. I'm not sure what this one is. Dark skin. We got some sort of warrior. Full-sized legs, it looks like. Uh, I got a furry collar here. And then a head. Yep, I think that's I think that is what happened here. There's a male and a female head, possibly. I can't quite tell. Or there's just two different versions of people, anyway. Two different sets of faces. Some hair. There's a torch. Or a Molotov cocktail, kind of looks like. And we've got an axe head and an axe pole here. Alright, there's that warrior. Box number five. Well, I'm seeing some red and purple. 
This is going to be like a demon spellcaster kind of person. Maybe a wizard. Purple jumpsuit. Those orange faces. Again, two sets of faces. Yeah, one seems to have lips, uh, like female, feminine lips. So this, again, has the option of being a guy or a girl. We've got hair with demon horns. There's a little baby red dragon, which is super cool. We've got an energy effect. Like magic missiles, perhaps. And I have no idea what this is. Oh, this is a like a demon tail. Very cool. So you actually put this in between the two halves of the body. Oh, I like that. I wish the dragon and maybe even the bird man had tails like that. That's cool. And the little baby dragon can sit on his hand. Awesome. All right, we've got one more from the first box. And I've got to say, I feel like I've gotten two of the figures that I really wanted so far. Uh, I would really like the Mind Flare. And I kind of would really like to get the Lady of Pain. Mostly just because we had some Planescape books when I was a kid. So it's like a sort of a character that I recognize from my era of playing D&D. I'd like to get Vecna. Alright, so this is the white-haired elf bard, I'm guessing. Brown pants and a green-ish blue tunic. We've got two different faces. Oh, I like the singing face. Flip that around. Eyes closed. La 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 la! Oh, gotta put the scarf on before we put the head on. White hair with elf ears. And then he's got a loot and two swashbuckling swords. I don't know if he's supposed to come with two swords or they gave me an extra one. But you can never say no to an extra sword. It'd be cool if he had a way to hold the sword... Or the loot, something on his back. Since he has that little scarf piece, it'd be cool if there was like a loot to slide the sword in or a hole to peg the, the loot in. Because I, I would like to have him playing the loot, which he needs two hands for. And he can't use the swords then. Alright, so we opened one whole box. We've got six of the 12 characters. I'm going to be really bummed if this ends up being a total duplicate. Would love Vecna, would love the Mind Flare. Those are my top two choices still left. Lady of Pain maybe be third. There's like a Vampire Knight and a Witch. Those are also pretty cool. I'd love as few duplicates as possible. Fingers crossed. And these things cost about $5 a piece, so... Getting doubles kind of stinks. Dragon Knight. Bummer. Although cool. Please don't just be a repeat box. Like, watch it turn out the skew is the same on both these boxes. So everybody's the same. Kenku. Please be different. Ranger. The warrior with the fuzzy collar. You know these other two are going to be the same. There's just no way. These are exactly identical boxes. And that blows. Yep, the demon with the orange skin. Yep, and the the bard elf. I feel like I got ripped off a little bit. I, I spent uh, way too much money to get doubles of everybody. Uh, are these boxes... I, I'm not a typical Lego buyer. I love Lego, but I don't buy a lot. Um, I've never bought a box set of six minifigures before. Do these boxes always come with the same ones? Should they? Should it be random? If I had ordered more or uh, ordered from a different uh, retailer, would I have gotten the other six or gotten a mix? Assorted six figurines. Six, six, seven, six, five minifigure assortment. Yeah. I guess I should have known that I was walking into that trap. I guess I gotta hunt for some more of these still. If I want to get uh, Vecna or the Mind Flare or Lady of Pain. 
I think the Mind Flare is the one I want the most. Like his little brain buddy. What do you guys think? D&D Lego minifigures cool? Hard pass? Are you excited I did something Lego related on the channel? Because it's been a while since I've done anything Lego related. I don't know if I've ever done anything Lego related on um, Peg Warmers itself. I'm a sucker for minifigures though. I'm filming this on Labor Day. So I hope everyone had a good Labor Day. This will be coming out post RetroCon, trying to get ahead because uh, holiday weekend we had people here, and uh, RetroCon weekend I'll be out and about, so it's harder to film and edit and things like that. So I hope you enjoy this episode, and make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, share this video with a Lego or toy collecting friend, and thanks for hanging on the peg with me.